The next uh, item in the order of the agenda is the mayoral minute. Now you would have all received this this afternoon. Sorry, forgive me, councillors. I'm not feeling great. Um, yes. You would have received this this afternoon, this mayoral minute. Um, I will be speaking to this mayoral minute now, and uh, then I'll be putting it to the floor. Does any councillor have an item, a declaration of interest, please? Madam Mayor, I uh, earlier foreshadowed a uh, less than significant non pecuniary interest. Can you please outline that interest? Uh, because it directly references a Facebook page run by somebody I know. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, therefore, I will proceed with the Mayoral Minute. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to challenge you on the question of the um, propriety of this notice of motion. Um, on what basis, Councillor? Uh, point nine, nine point nine of the Council uh, Code of Meeting Practice says that a mayoral minute must not be used must not be used to put without notice matters that are routine or not urgent, and urgency is uh, decided uh, based on whether uh, a matter requires a decision by the council before the next scheduled ordinary meeting of the council. Your notice, your mayoral minute, does not meet that threshold and is therefore out of order. I would be delighted to see this debated, but it was improper for you to have brought it to the chamber so late in the day. There is a person involved uh, uh, who is the author of the, the Facebook page that you mentioned, who was on a train on their way back from the city and and could not attend and defend themselves. I would invite you to defer this to the following meeting. Thank you, Councillor. I thank you for your remarks. Um, as the Chair, I have the authority to declare that it is urgent and therefore I will be not acknowledging your remarks and therefore believe that the Mayoral Minute is in order. The Chair has the call. Uh, therefore, I'll be putting the Mayoral Minute forward as it is and I will speak to that Mayoral Minute. The reason I believe that it is urgent is because, as Councillor Zemprogno has said previously, transparency and accountability in local government could not be more important. And I suppose that's why in the previous notice of motion, we had many councillors agree uh, to support the request for that information because transparency is something that is absolutely vital, especially if you wish to run as a councillor in the very election coming up in September and you are refusing to be transparent with the community you so desperately want to represent. Point of order, As you can Mayor. see, what is your point of order? I think you might be imputing improper motives. Absolutely not. I'm talking to the heart of transparency and I'll continue to talk to the heart of transparency, which is why my mayoral minute is titled as such. As you can see by point one of my mayoral minute, I'm asking to seek advice on the method and potential wording required to amend Hawkesbury City Council's Code of Conduct to require all councillors to disclose annually whether they personally or person set out in clause 4.4 of Council's Code of Conduct administers or is involved in any slash all social media pages, websites, newsletters or published material that particularly and repeatedly discuss the business of Hawkesbury City Council, its councillors and or its staff. Now, if you are somebody or you are directly associated with somebody who falls under clause 4.4, you should be disclosing that publicly. I can't be simple, simply plistic enough about the fact that you should be disclosing that. If you are elected to represent this community, if you are elected to be a custodian of ratepayers' money, if you are elected to adopt policies that mean that bind this community or bind this council and its staff as to how they operate, then you must be transparent. And if you want to hide under a mask of something else or someone else, then the community deserves to know that. Point two, subject to that advice, council consider amending its code of conduct to accord with that advice. Now, as you can see in my background, it has come to my attention. There is a website slash Facebook page operating called Hawkesbury City Councillor Watch. I'm not going to refer to my background here word for word to suffice to say that that Facebook page was created, and this is a fact that has played out in the public arena. That Facebook page slash website was created 
with the purpose of showing who did and who did not attend council meetings and how they voted. It was done, it was created, from what I can see, after the rescission motion of Councillor Nathan Semprogno to have that data recorded publicly in council's documentation. What I can gather from that, fa that rescission motion going through is that this Facebook page was then created to fulfil that end that Councillor Zemprogno wanted to fulfil. Councillor Zemprogno has now declared tonight in this meeting that someone close to him is the author of that page. Therefore, I believe that all councillors, not just in council Facebook pages or uh, in Facebook pages or in websites that discuss intently, deeply what happens here in this chamber and in Hawkesbury City Council, I believe that we all as councillors should be disclosing annually to this body all of the websites, Facebook pages, newsletters and published materials that we put out in our titles as councillor, mayor or deputy mayor where we are talking about the business of this council. And if you have a problem with that, then I have a problem with that. Because if you are going out there and saying and talking about council, own it. If you can't own it, there is a fundamental problem with your credibility and your desire to represent this council. Therefore, I can't see any councillor in this room who has in this chamber before spoken ad nauseum about transparency, having a problem with this mayoral minute tonight. I will happily put on a disclosure form tomorrow the Facebook pages that I administer that are linked or discuss what happens here in council. If anyone else has a problem with that, they have something to hide, and I would be deeply concerned about that. Hence my mayoral minute seeking advice as to how to amend the code of conduct to enable that transparency. Any councillors wishing to speak? <laughs> Councillor Sheeva. Yeah, question, Madam Mayor. <coughs> um, uh, 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 just ask Councillor Con Connolly, because I, I haven't got my code of conduct in the drawer. It's the name of the desk. Um, clause 4.4, .4, could you or the staff read that, please? 4.4? Yeah. I hope I have them mixed up to date. Um, March 20th. Oh, sorry, code. I don't have the code of conduct with me, Councillor. We'll just have to. I've got the code of meeting practice. But I'm to <coughs> Thanks, Clause 4.4. For the purposes of Clause 4.3, which talks about pecuniary interest in matters, what 4.4 does is define what is a relative. A. Your relative is any of the following. One. Oh, sorry, I. Your parent, grandparent, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, nephew, niece, lineal descendant or adopted child. Roman numerals two, your spouses or de facto's partners, parent, grandparent, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, nephew, niece, lineal descendant or adopted child. Three Roman numerals, the spouse or de facto of a person referred to in paragraphs one and two Roman numerals. B, de facto partner has the same meaning as defined in section 21C of the Interpretation Act 1987. Basically, it outlines the definition of relative counsellor. Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Madam Mayor, um, I, I don't like restrictions of anything, any sort. Changes for, that, that restrict people, I, I have problems with. Um, I would ask you, and I publicly, I asked you before, <coughs> um, this only relates to council matters. So if, if, if you've got websites that, religious or otherwise, doesn't apply, and I'll put that on the record. And as you can see in point one, um, in the last sentence there, particularly and repeatedly discuss the business of Hawkesbury City Council, its council laws and or its staff. So if you out there and you run abc.com and teach people how to spell, that's not applicable. Yep. Okay. <coughs> the, the, um, uh, I spoke earlier tonight about communication with, with, with the community. <coughs> Um, and um, it, 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 it's a two-way street a bit. Um, to sit around this, uh, these 12 seats here, there, there's something we need to do as councillors, and that's um, be respectful of other councillors. The community put them here. Um, we don't have a choice who we work with. The community put them here. 
and we have to do our best to work together on their behalf for them. Um, the if and and I know we've had issues um, that we've discussed privately and otherwise, um, and I guess any big business or council in this regard has issues about management structure sometimes or outcomes and the likes. <coughs> sometimes that's probably avoidable and that's what the communication is about and sometimes it's not. Um, <coughs> but, and, and I haven't seen this website nor am I interested in looking at it or any other that make comments um, either um, uh, supportive or otherwise. If people have got a problem, um, uh, my private telephone number is available to anyone who wants to ring. And I uh, answer the phone. Um, I'm not interested in, in the comments I hear about Facebook and the like. I don't need them. Uh, I don't want them. So, <coughs> and <coughs> I know from the comments um, from other councillors, and most of you are um, up to speed with, with, with the IT that's available today, um, it doesn't interest me one little bit. I've got enough problems in my life without looking for them. So, Madam Mayor, <laughs> I, I, if this is only about council, and the, the, the problem that I, and I haven't seen it, is that if it's about the outcome of things we do, good or bad, um, I, I don't have a problem with that. If we make mistakes, we need to get better. If there's commentary that would indicate from a political point of view, I'm right, you're wrong attitude, uh, that I do have a problem with it because you're elected to sit around this table and have a different point of view if you wish to and you think you represent the, uh, a particular aspect of council business on the behalf of the community. <clears throat> That's your obligation sitting around this table. If you lose out, the people put you here, the, the decision was made, carried or lost, whatever the case may be, and as a councillor, you've got to wear it. Now, you, you mightn't be comfortable with it, but if you don't believe in it, you work harder. Um, and so, if, if, it, if it's a site that, that detracts from, uh, from councillors and, and the work they do here, um, I, I do have an issue. If it's commentary on council matters, um, we're running late on a project, we won the lottery, whatever it is, uh, I don't have an issue with that at all. It's just about starting. So, so, Madam Mayor, is, is the commentary within this document, um, uh, with, within this website, um, com complementary of, uh, of the outcome of the council decision? No, it is not. There, there are posts that are not, and they misconstrue to the public the true what has actually happened in this chamber holistically. Okay, I'm going to with that. Gallery, please be quiet. The gallery, the gallery will be quiet. Thank you. <coughs> the gallery will be quiet, or we'll adjourn the meeting. It, the the, the councillors deserve to be heard in science. Councillor Connolly. Thank you. Uh, I think the issue here is um, maybe being a little bit lost. Um, in translation, no one's suggesting that the council's and Progno couldn't have a website that criticises all our decisions. Nobody's saying that. Of course he can. Of course he can. Like, that's a democratic right. It's fundamental to democracy. He has the right to do that. All we're saying is you should be up front and put your name to it. You shouldn't hide behind a false identity if, if you're doing that. And you shouldn't, if you're a councillor and you want to have a website that pretends to be an independent watchdog of council, that's failing the most basic and fundamental ethics test there is. It's, it's, it needs to be transparent. You need to be willing to put your name to what you're doing. And if you're not, it's because you're trying to hide something. And, and this is just having a very, very basic standard of behavior for elected officials. Um, you, it's, I, I can't believe we're having any discussion or disagreement over it. Of course, we should do that. This is tidying up a problem with our code of conduct where it, it's not envisaged that anyone will ever try this. And obviously our code of conduct's trying to keep up with social media and so on. But um, if, if anybody, any councillor um, was out there with a website pretending not to be them, commenting on council. That is a problem. Um, and, and all we're saying is, if you're in that position, if you are a very close relative to you, is out there saying, I'm an independent watchdog of council and here's my opinion on what happened independently, um, I'm gonna keep a watch on it for you. That's unethical and shouldn't be allowed. 
nicely said. Council Lines Bucket. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've got some questions. Um, uh, my first question is, how is it a pecuniary interest? That's why we're not referring to that clause. We're referring to what the definition of relative is. I'm referring to what relative is in 4.4. That's the definition of relative. Well, it's also in 5.9, which is a non-pecuniary interest, which is in fact what it would be if it were an interest at all. Um, because those definitions, of course, are part of that clause of the Code of Conduct. So I think it's um, implying that it is a pecuniary interest, which, of course, implies that Councillor Sampronio, as now has occurred, uh, that we are actually discussing another councillor uh, by name in the chamber, which I'm very uncomfortable with. Um, anyway, that, that's how it's gone. Um, that would suggest that Councillor Zampronio was gaining some financial benefit or loss from it. I'm happy to take that on note and change accordingly if needed. Thank you. My second question was, in your background uh, information uh, regarding the data being misconstrued, etc., are you actually suggesting that Councillor Zambrogno in this site is holding out that he is the council? Are you actually suggesting that it is Council Zamprogno behind the page? Well, like I that think sentence that's been alone, established. he he hasn't admitted it, but it's quite well, obvious. So, well, um, I, I don't know. Well, I, you I, just I, said it. I'm asking you, Council. Well, Lines I've got no there. idea. He declared an interest, and you're implying oh, no. you are implying it is him. I um, haven't said it was. You just and, did. I'm questioning you what you just said. Conley just what about it, mate? Thank you, Council. We're getting into a debate here. Yeah, I'd like you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Sheather. Upheld. Um, your specific question, Councillor Lansbuck? I It was, are you suggesting in your background uh, the information that the person running this site so is holding out as being the council? The person running this site, as Councillor Connolly correctly said, is purporting to be the watchdog of council. And if that person has any link to this council, then therefore, referring to my heading, let's be transparent about that. Ethical is the exact word as well, and I thank Councillor Connolly for mentioning it on a couple of occasions there. This comes back to your to the internal ethics of being a publicly elected representative and accountable to the voting community. If you are going to run an election platform and you have sustained the same platform over many years, then actually act upon that platform and be transparent, and that's what this is going to. Is, is and that the answer to my question, Madam Lee? Were you talking about the data being misconstrued? I was asking whether you are making an accusation that the person behind this site is holding out. I have had the, the reason council. that I have declared urgency and brought it forward today is many members of the community coming and approaching me saying, is this an official council website and Facebook page? And myself having to disclose that it is not. And I absolutely wanted to put on the public record via this mayoral minute that it is not. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the, uh, another question. The, um, the disclosures you're wishing people to make, um, I'm gathering that is about any Facebook page that um, has or, or is uh, set up that uh, repeatedly discusses the business of Hawkesbury City Council, its councillors and its staff. That's what, that's what you're relating that's to? That's what it says. It absolutely has to be acutely talking about or discussing the business of council, councillors and its staff. So the business of councillors, is that correct? Business of Hawkesbury City Council discusses its councillors and the decisions they make within their capacity as councillors and all the staff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Jurek. Thank you. Um, uh, I might be supporting this notice of motion or the, the mayoral minute um it, it looks like autocratic policy that will be highlighted as an invasion of privacy um i've got family members that have been commenting on council decisions from before i was even born that that is not my responsibility to be accountable for their right to express their opinions on any platform that is available to them um I, i'm not going to try and regulate what my granny posts on facebook she'd box me ears off uh, I respect my spouse's right to post what she likes on whatever platform she chooses without me looking over her shoulder. If people are breaking the law, there's, there's processes in place to sort that. If people are committing slander, there's processes in places for that. Um, I'm going to call a point of order there, Councillor Jurek, because you've missed the whole point of the Merrill Minute. It's if you administer 
those that pages or publish that not page. a point of order. Not a point I, of order. I don't think it's worded in a manner that I can support it. Thanks. Councillor Lines Bucket, you've already spoken. No, I've asked questions. I'll, I'll speak against the mayor on minute now. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I think I just, I've, I am actually quite gobsmacked by it. Um, but yes, I know transparency and I'm all for. Madam, Madam Mayor, it, point of order. Are Councillors behaving. are entitled under the Code of Meeting Practice to be heard without interruption. Thank that you, includes Councillor by Willer. the Chair to editorial Thank line. you, Councillor Wheeler. I'm also the Chair and I'll allow Councillor Lyons Bucket to continue. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I can't see why simply putting out a press statement that said that that is not a council Facebook page would not have sufficed in this instance if that was your major concern. It does sound to me as if there's some sort of personalised attack going on. Point of order, uh, Councillor Lyons Bucket, that is absolutely, you cannot infer that. Then there's no, infer, there's no inference. It's inferred of in the information and we just sat through an item where it was inferred that I was doing certain things for a certain purpose, which uh, which was the point of order was upheld, that, that I couldn't say that. So, Madam Mayor, I am really concerned about this. First of all, about the urgency. It is not an urgent matter. And you yourself has, have sat here and criticised previous mayoral minutes as not being urgent uh, on the very basis of that uh, clause in the Code of Meeting Practice. It is... It is very, very concerning. I am all for the transparency. I would be happy. I, I do not administer any Facebook pages besides my uh, councillor and personal page and my people not parties page, which all declare it's me, and I'm happy to do that. Um, I, and I, I think that anybody should do that if they're, if they're asked to do that. But I don't think it needs to be amended to the code of conduct because I think the code of conduct covers anything that could emerge within those posts that you're referring to. And I believe it does because it's, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe you could explain then that what is not in the code of conduct, what sort of behaviour that you could possibly be referring to is not in the code of conduct. That's a question. And I don't need to answer you other than the fact that if someone raises an issue with the code of conduct, it goes to investigation and costs the ratepayer. So this needs to be tidied up. And if anyone has a problem disclosing what they administer in terms of council matters, then I have serious ethical questions about that. Councillor Connolly, do you have a question? Yeah, just a question to staff on that point. Is there anything in the code of conduct currently that would prohibit a councillor or their partner from having a Facebook page regularly commenting on council matters without disclosing that it's them? Is anyone available for that or should we take that on notice? General Manager. Um, thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, the answer is no. What we do have in our recently adopted media policy is a provision that provides that councillors must advise the general manager or the corporate communications manager of any social media platforms they administer um, in relating which relate to content of council or council officials. Um, so there's a provision in the social media policy that I guess the differential there is that it's not in itself sitting in the code of conduct and it doesn't um, expand itself to those um, related parties that in, in section 4.4 of the code. Uh, thank you. For that. I guess that, that was to, to the point of Councillor Lyons Bucket's question. I think that answers the question. Um, sorry, sorry. The gallery, Mr. Watt, please sit down. You have no right to approach councillors. Please sit down and accord yourself with the rules of the chamber. It's unprofessional and embarrassing. Please sit down. I just want to. Thank you, Councillor sort of, Connolly. Um, Mr. Count, sorry, please sit down. Please sit down. Your behaviour is unacceptable. Please leave then, Count. Please, Mr. Watt, please leave. Thank you. Please leave if that's how you want to move. Your behaviour in this chamber is unacceptable, Mr. Want. Oh, now he wishes to stay. Free, free Palestine. Ah, uh, sorry, but that's not akin to the topic at hand. Councillor Connolly, please continue. Um, Councillor Zampogna has now asked them to stay, so they've decided to stay. Um, 
I just want to say I would encourage. I'm surprised by the debate here, and I would encourage all councillors to think about the issue in a broader sense rather than what's happening right now, because this is a serious ethical issue that could affect any one of us. Thank you, Councillor Connolly. Um, Madam Mayor, I hadn't finished when Councillor Connolly interjected with his question. Okay, Councillor Lyons Bucket, I wasn't sure what time you were up to. Um, well, I would only done about one minute. Um, please proceed. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I still would urge you to rethink putting that out as a press release rather than amending the Code of Conduct because that will undoubtedly lead to more expense for this council with even more codes of conduct when already it is so expensive uh, for the number that have been taken out. Um, I, I just, I just am very concerned and I had lost my train of thought of what I was speaking about before but did wish to finish. Um, Still now I've now I've lost it. I'd, I'll I'll have to um, make her. I, I just urge you that that I don't think that this is the path. I don't think it's a matter of ethics. Um, really, I, I mean, in the past. All right, I'm going to say it. In the past, would we retrospectively go back? and look at the admins of Facebook pages that have existed in past times that have attacked other members here. And if we vote against this tonight, will there be any public posts put about who voted against it by anybody in this room? Councillor Lyons Bucket, again, not your concern if there was. And secondly, I well, it would be I urge ironic, you to, wouldn't it? It'd be very ironic. I urge you to go back to what the mayoral minute is actually seeking and its advice. You're not changing the code of conduct tonight. You're not adopting a change tonight. We're asking for advice. Uh, when that advice comes back, we'll consider the next steps. That's all this mayoral minute is asking for uh, because there is misinformation going out there into the community. And I think the community has the right to know who the author of that information is. It is as simple as that. Is there any other councillor wishing to speak? Councillor Weigel. Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, transparency. Well, if you've got a Facebook page out there, you can post anything you want. I haven't got a problem with that. Just don't, just don't, just own the bloody thing. Don't hide behind some other anonymity or whatever you want to do, okay? Just own it, right? Now, I had a look at this very quickly, this Facebook page, um, what I could gleam out of it today. Of course, I'm there and I looked at the facts and figures and I said, it's interesting. I'm marginally ahead of Councillor Bucket's line on absent on, on not voting on certain things and not representing council. And I think, well, where'd I get that stat from? And I thought, I know the, the issues when I wasn't at council. One was that I was away from my life because issues very early in council and there wasn't any uh, internet there. And the other thing was um, I excused myself because there was a conflict of interest on two and one of those was extension motion based on an issue up uh, on the other side of the river. So. Yeah, well, if you want to state the facts, state the facts, okay? I don't know how much BS was in it. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. There's not much, many comments on it, and I don't believe there's many people reading on it. Um, all I can say, if there is somebody in this room that's got this Facebook page and, and they're drafting it, they're pushing it behind somebody else's name, don't do that. It's, it's, it's what Councillor Conley says. It's not ethical. Just own it. Be transparent. You know where it's coming from. Most of everybody else, else around this place has got a Facebook page. They own it. They put their name to it. And I appreciate them doing that. Just own the damn thing, will you? Be transparent. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Question. Councillor Sheeda, you've got a question? Yes, thank you. But, um, <coughs> it's indicated here it's got to be disclosed or the proposal would be disclosed annually. So what happens from their back? <laughs> Well, it would be moving forward. It's not retrospective, so it would be moving forward. Um, and we'd have to take the advice that we received on how to best do that. No, I, I, I mean, if you're providing a disclosure annually, uh -huh. well, during that period of when you're disclosing it, you do... However, however the dis um, we haven't even... Well, I haven't got any advice as to how that disclosure would be worded. So we'd have to have a document crafted and we'd have to have a look at that, Councillor. Okay. Uh, yep. Thanks. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
I was going to say what you just said a minute ago, but I'll say it myself that I, I, I'm apparently reading a different recommendation to many other people in this room. The recommendation is that we, number one, seek advice. And number two, when we get that advice, we consider amending the code of conduct. This recommendation doesn't tell us to do anything. It especially doesn't tell us to um, change the code of conduct. And it especially doesn't tell us that we should shut our grandmother's um, Facebook page down or anything like that. There's no, no invasion of privacy that's going on here. It's just... One, we seek advice. Two, we consider changing the code of conduct. So it's all going to come back to us. And at that stage, we look at what the advice is. The advice might be that, no, you can't do that. You can't change the code of conduct or something akin to that, in which case we don't follow up with um, changing the code of conduct. We don't know what the advice is going to be. So we firstly need to wait for that advice. And then secondly, when it comes back to us, then we consider amending the code of conduct. So, uh, unless I got a different copy uh, than everyone else, that's what my um, business paper says, and that's what I'm going to be voting on. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Wheeler. Oh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, I can't support this in its current form. Firstly, I don't think it's urgent. We have a, an additional council meeting. We're we're about to vote on an additional council meeting in two weeks. This could have waited. For, this could have waited two weeks if you were really keen to pursue this as a change to the code of conduct uh, then I think you've you had a couple of options um, you could put out as Councillor Alex Bucket suggested a press release stating that Hawkesbury Council watch which seems to be the problem page in question I'm not quite sure why that's the problem page when we've had eight. the eight years that I have been on council has been plagued with um, with various people um, Giving their the giving everyone the benefit of their opinion on council um, on council's performance. Certainly, when we were for a, the blink of an eye a progressive council, there were numerous pages lining up, including "Have Your Say" on the new Windsor Bridge, who seemed to have a lot of um, um, in of, um, internal information about council, and were very happy to to talk about council's business and council law's business um, day in and day out. There's plenty of meat already in the code of conduct. This this belongs, if if it is going to 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 um, to play out, belongs in the media policy, not in the code of conduct. Um, three point um, three point two three and three point two four already cover situations where councillors' comment um, is is governed by the code of conduct. Uh, if if you can't make that it stick from the code of conduct, then I don't think it's the code that needs tightening. Um, I think it's. I think we need to be more. Um, we need to speak more openly about what's um, about what's out in the public arena, and and perhaps be less be a, be calmer in our reactions to it. There's who is going to validate these disclosures? We know. Um, the disclosures are only as um, are only as good, uh, are only useful if they're factual. I'm I'm shocked that this has actually come from the party of free speech and individual rights. As Councillor Jurek said, you know th this is overreach and is clearly a witch hunt. It names a single site and a councillor has been s repeatedly singled out. Um, I've never had a fake profile. I'm flat out remembering who I am most of the time, let alone remembering who else I might be. Um, I I run three Facebook pages, my own, which has very tight settings, uh, my councillor page and the Hawkesbury Greens page, along with another admin. Uh, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that I'm those people. Um, this is the, one of the problems with this as it's proposed is that it only involves relatives. What about other personal relationships? It's far too, this, this is really easy to get around. You just use a friend, um, phone a friend, perfect not covered by 4.4 um, of, of the pecuniary interest um, list. You can you can use whoever you like. Doesn't need to be even someone you like very much. Perfect. Um, and and what happens to extended family relationships? I mean, I know there's another, there's a councillor in this chamber whose father-in-law administers um, another Facebook page and who is vociferous in his, um, in his condemnation of council and other councillors. What are we gonna do about that? We are not our relatives keepers okay. we are and there is the classic case in point we do not i i do 
I am the only person in this. I am the only person in this council whose spouse is governed by council's code of conduct because he is a council employee. Everybody else's partner is free to say whatever they like, in their own name or in somebody else's, and that happens as well. Do we have to now start declaring our spouses alters? Mine doesn't have one, but I know other councillors' spouses do. Mm. Should councillors declare their alters? I've never had one, but I know other councillors have. When does this stop? When? This is a o- massive overreach. Thank you for your comments, which I wholeheartedly disagree with, hence the mayoral minute. Uh, anybody who, to me, has an issue with owning up, it, we're not asking anyone else in this entire population of the Hawkesbury to sign a declaration except the 12 elected people in this room and asking them to be transparent with how they operate in terms of their public role. Um, I'm honestly surprised <laughs> at some of the remarks here tonight uh, to protect certain people who may be involved in that. Uh, are there any other councillors who wish Point to make any that comments? Point of order. Withdrawn, councillor. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments from councillors? Madam Mayor. Council- oh, point of order, Madam Mayor. Councillor Wheeler raised a point of order and you dismissed it before she said I've withdrawn it. the remarks that she would have been referring to. Oh, Thank you, you foresaw. I mean, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Councillor Dogramachi. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If I start uh, talking, it will take hours and hours. And when I start, I won't stop. All I'm saying is that, you know, we, everyone, you know, had a go. Can we just move on, please? And that's the reason maybe, you know, we have only a few people, you know, coming in here. Please, can we just go on? Thank you, Councillor. Nicely said. Uh, if there's no other councillors wishing to... I, I, might say, I might say a word, Madam Mayor. Councillors and Prognati. <laughs> right. Um, firstly, a question. Don't start my clock, because I wanted to start with a question to you, Madam Mayor. If I was prepared in this meeting to discuss the ownership of the Hawkesbury City Council Watch, Facebook page, would you be prepared to talk about the ownership of the fake Hawkesbury Matters page? And quite frankly, the ownership of the Hawkesbury Matters page doesn't talk about, well, as far as I saw from uh, looking at it online, doesn't talk about councillors, Hawkesbury City Council, its staff. Me. <laughs> All right, then. Repeatedly so, discussing it. Well, what I'll, Hawkesbury I'll... City Councillor Watch does, Councillor Zamprogno, and you may know too well, is that it continuously, since its inception on the 11th of May 2022, has discussed every single council meeting, who attended, who did not, and how they voted. You would well know this. Well, I'll, I'll take from your remarks that your lack of objection means that you're happy for that to be on the table. I think that the mayor has seen too much Scooby-Doo, because at the end of an episode of Scooby-Doo, the baddie was unmasked, and then he then says, aha, it was me all along, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. You see, um, no, no. Let me back up. Let me let me talk about principles. I like to talk. I like to talk principles to start with. There's a principle that's been articulated by um, the Australian government in their declaration on open government. They said citizens have a right to government to access government data and information, and to use it to ensure that government is more transparent, accountable, and responsive to the needs of the community. Now it's true that in February. 2022, I brought a, a motion uh, to the chamber, it was a new chamber, and I suggested that in the interests of that transparency and accountability, that we um, collate and present a, a lot of information that was already being gathered concerning councillor attendance at meetings, <clears throat> but then to go further and then to report at the end of the term uh, councillors' attendance at committees and workshops and um, expenses and conferences uh, and their IT expenditure and you know some of that material was public and some of it wasn't but I believed that again to reference an earlier issue that there were people who would take note just before an election and it was a reflection on how how we were doing who turns up who's conscious who votes for what of course, that was rescinded in May 2022 by a motion that was brought by Councillor Cotlatch, Councillor Calvert and Councillor Connolly. And I believe that people are open in themselves to judge w- whether that represented a, a diminution of the accountability in this chamber. And it is true that, curiously enough, at the point that Council was no longer collecting to present that information, 
that a Facebook page called Hawkesbury City Council of Watch sprung up to discharge much the same function. And I'm glad that the Mayor is prepared to reflect that it's a very slick and professionally produced page that presents the data of, that was already public, I might add, who turns up, who has to recuse themselves, who votes for what, and to what degree councillors agree or disagree with one another. All completely public data presented, and I say this hand on heart, in a, in a way that is, is neutral and impartial. I am not the admin of Hawkesbury City Council Watch, but the, the Mayor, I think, perhaps hasn't been paying attention because her thesis is premised on the fact that I have, uh, you know, neglected to own up. Whereas if the Mayor was listening to the interview that I gave on Pulse FM on the 15th of April with their presenter, Catherine Jean, I talk at length about pioneering the idea and running with others this Facebook page. That's out in the public domain. You can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch that interview. I, it has not been a secret. Now, Council's media policy, as others have pointed out, uh, says that um, you it, it adequately covers what we're talking about here. Firstly, Council Council officials, and I'm a Council official, can't uh, issue material that's defamatory or offensive or humiliating. And uh, for the purposes of this policy, councillor social media platforms are not council social, me social media platforms. As far as, you know, purporting to be an organ of council, if I can reference you to both the website and the Facebook page, since its inception, it says, this is not a website of Hawkesbury City Council. All inquiries about this website, please email the email address written and authorised by David Simpson Richmond, who is my partner, a name that I have not spoken in this chamber because I and he are very private. But he is happy to put his name to that. The Facebook page says, this is not an official Facebook page of the Hawkesbury City Council. The information is presented from publicly available data provided by Hawkesbury City Council in their meeting minutes and agendas. The independence of that site, I associate with my independence as a councillor and people are welcome to draw their own judgment about whether it is sufficiently independent to warrant their scrutiny. The integrity of the data is simply the integrity of Council's own data, simply repackaged in a way that encourages people to pay attention to something that, frankly, they ought to pay more attention to, but generally don't. It's just data. Thank you, Councillor. Your time has expired. I, I seek an extension. Oh, well, you're not... Well, I don't grant you one, so thank you very much for your contribution to the debate. Well, I was um, just getting to the interesting so part. I'm not interested in your interesting part. You've exhausted five minutes, so thank you very much. You can probably go on Facebook and let everyone know what you wanted to say afterwards. Madam Mayor, I, I wanted to go on and talk about Councilor. your vastly defamatory Facebook page Councilor. that was Councilor. registered in the name of your developer boyfriend, which goes thank around... Thank you very much, Councillor. Defaming so both for allowing. and local businesses. Thank you. I call because an adjournment. The, the meeting is adjourned for 15 minutes. Thank you very much. While I seek.